I am unashamed. What about you? So, uh, Jen, our social media guru that handles all our stuff for our restoration, she sent me an interesting email last night. Um, Dad, you probably won't be aware of this, but there's a there's a website called Wikipedia that most young people now, they go there whenever they want to know information about something, they go to Wikipedia. It's, it's supposed to be like an online, um, not really a dictionary, what would you call it, like a... A what? Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. There you go. Thank you, Josh. You got to get somebody young. So it's like an online. The problem is that you can just put your own stuff on there or, you know, other people can put stuff on. People change stuff. So it's not very reliable. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, so so she sent me Jace's Wikipedia. Oh, really? Yeah. So I thought you'd find this interesting, Jace. So here, here's. Uh, yeah, I bet. I, yeah. I would say more than interesting. <laughs> Here's what the word, Jason wow. Silas, Jason quotes Robertson. They got that right. Born August 16, 1969. True. All right. Is an American television star on the A&E reality television show Duck Dynasty. Debatable. The COO of the business Duck Commander. That that ship, ship, that ship sailed. <laughs> I've been demoted since then. An innovator and a professional duck hunter. Yeah, that's okay. probably I'll true, right? right? Jace lives in West Monroe, Louisiana, with his wife, Missy, and their three children. They got your kids on here. I, have, he, I actually have four. Oh, that's right. Let's see, I acquired. They don't. They they didn't get the. <laughs> they, they didn't get the news about my young daughter that's from, right, Nicaragua. from Nicaragua. He is known for avoiding work in favor of hunting and fishing. That's just a bald faced <laughs> lie. He speaks Duccanese. And for his self-proclaimed frog hunting abilities, he calls himself a frog's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what somebody put on Wikipedia about you. I'd say most of that's pretty accurate. But here's the sad part, Dave. Look at your picture that's on there. Well, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they got they got most of it right, but they got the wrong picture. They got, they he has got your little brother. <laughs> oh, that's Jeff. That's Jeff. Yep. It's, well, that must have been through a bad time in his look, life. It says Robertson in 2014. Jason Silas Robertson, age 51. Oh, that says Bernice, Louisiana. That's also incorrect. You it, were born in Bernice, weren't you? No, Willie was. Willie. You and I were born in Rustin. Boy, he, that they, just shows you <laughs> when y'all are getting information. Y'all told me everything <laughs> that I haven't read, <laughs> I looked at. I've never looked at Facebook ever. So y'all have told me, though, you've given me warnings mm -hmm. that everything is to be treated as a lie until proven <laughs> otherwise. That was Jason's advice right over there. He said, it's a lie, whatever they say, until proven otherwise. Right. So, so accept it as a lie. Well, what the, what the, but that's enough to show me that that's that. But see, what happens uh, is so some person, they go to there all the time, I'm sure, because they're wanting to check Jace out. They heard him on the podcast. They saw him somewhere. And you go there, and you know, like about half of that was accurate. Most are they drug free? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, they probably were drug free. They're just not lie free. <laughs> There's no consequences on the internet for getting the story right. Correct. So if you're bored with being in your mama's bedroom with a computer, you can dream up a lot of ways. Boredom. Breeds a lot. Let me just There's let me just interject. No <clears throat> let me interject this, which is a bunch of bull. But I mean, I'm bull. I, I mean, just, Phil. I what you don't what realize I is, is that you on the internet in the past year, you've died twice. <laughs> you've been in prison. You're you're leading a cartel uh, selling marijuana. Yeah, selling, selling marijuana. marijuana. You're. I mean, <laughs> and look, there's people. I, I usually have people at least once a week. Somebody I bump into the grocery store or whatever, and they they say something like, "How are y'all making it without Cy?" You know, <laughs> and I'm like, "What do you, what do you mean?" <laughs> well, you know, it's so sad that he died, and I was like, "Well, I just saw him." <laughs> so they're like, He's "Really? Back. He He's came back. back from the dead?" I'm like, "So now you believe in the resurrection because you read it on the internet?" I mean. 
Believe the Bible. I'm feeling better about not participating in these type things. I feel better about it. Well, it's you, yeah, it's not a it's not a bad place. I've to never work. heard one say when I ask the questions, what am I missing? I've never heard one say you're missing a whole lot. Most of them say you're not missing anything, Mr. Robinson. Right. Well, look, I'm, I'm like, not going to throw rocks at them because reading the Internet is just like going to church on Sunday, which is just like eating fish. You got to spit out the bones. We're all <laughs> flawed. But my problem is the people who it seems in our culture, there are people who view what they read on the internet as absolute truth. Why do these people keep coming up? And I'm like, but then if you start talking about the Bible, they start arguing. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm like, but you'll believe what somebody put on Facebook? Everything's true but the Bible. Yeah, it just seems, I I mean, am I crazy? This is the old adage of something seems too good to be true. It usually is. (laughs) Not true. Or too bad to be true. (laughs) That's right, exactly, or too bad. You know? Right. Well, that's that's where we've gotten, though. So now that's why the Internet has changed everything is because, you know, you don't have to go back very far. You had a very narrow source of how you found out what was going on in the world, the news source that broadened with cable television. Now it's even broader with the Internet. In some ways, it's good because you, you're able to hear some voices. But in some ways, you're, but you, can you trust the voice? That's there. Therein lies the problem. With the situation. So I've noticed that with so what the most common thing on the internet, especially on newsy websites, is they're trying to get you to click on their thing because that's where all the money is. When you click on there, the more clicks, the more money. And I and look, I get it. The more people that click on watch our podcast, the better the situation. So a lot of them are chasing the buck. So a lot of it's about the money. And so what happens is they have to have a sensational headline to get you to click on there. I mean, I noticed that when we told... So Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the dead is not at the top of the list. It's probably not get a lot of clicks. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just... Now, if you said, you know, something you know, defamatory about Jesus, you'd probably get some clicks. That's that's what's sad. I noticed it whenever we told Phyllis's story on the podcast. You know, we decided we were just going to... That's how we would tell the world that we have a sister, you have a daughter. And so... The story and the content, the only content they got because we didn't do interviews was from the podcast, which was accurate, everything in it. But none of the headlines matched what we said. You know, it was more, you know, Robert's a Duck Dynasty patriarch, you know, secret love child, every, yeah. anything to like be tantalizing, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then Jason, I actually made the one of the tabloids, all, all the all the brothers, that we were having this fight over her getting any money. Like we were, I hadn't heard this. Oh yeah, we were going over the wheel with a fine tooth comb. Oh boy, making sure that you know that we weeded her out. But I mean, somebody and it kept quoting an anonymous source close to the family, close to the situation. Yeah. So you know, it's just yeah. It, they ought to look at the entourage that's with me. They would be stunned. <laughs> Starting with Dan. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe there's a spy in your camp that's talking to one of the tabloids. But yeah. they had a picture of me on there that they had pulled off the internet, and it it wasn't the most flattering pic. It was I was probably at my top weight, and so Willie, I took him a copy of the tabloid over, and all he could, all he got out of the whole thing was how bad I looked in the picture. And so, <laughs> so Willie tweeted for the first time in about two years. He said, "Well." The the story is true about our sister. We love her, you know, he's, but we are checking out Al's DNA to see if he might be related to Kim Jong-un. <laughs> <laughs> that was what he's trying, which was pretty funny, I have to admit. So, And a little mean. And a little mean, which is, that's the that's way Willie's humor is. It's really funny, but a little bit mean. But yeah, so it's just, you know, you have to take it for what it is. But we, you know, our podcast is out there because of it, so... You know, it's good with the bad, you know. So we just, the smart thing is to, like Jace told Dallas uh, Jenkins, don't don't read a lot of comments. Just do, do, yeah. what you, do what you're doing. Don't get too hung up on the criticism. I know one thing. I have a lot of states where people are coming from. And uh, one, two, Sunday morning, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Different, ten different states were represented. 
from human yeah. beings who drove <laughs> all the way down I'm here. they were human. <laughs> to participate in the new birth. Yeah. So Some may have been angels. Some may have been angels. Who knows? Hebrews. And we probably, I saw your list, and I think there were at least four more states at the main campus where yep. I was. And yep, there so, you go. I mean, that's pretty amazing. 12, 14 yeah. states, you know, people drove that far. Yep. To participate in the new birth. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Right. So as long as that's happening, I'm not worried about all the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll just have to, Jason, just have to live with being Jeff on Wikipedia. I guess. It seems we live a simple life. We, we come down here. We're where we go duck hunting from, the lair. Yep. We're, we're inside the compound here. Yeah. And all the equipment, the duck equipment is all out there. We're back in here in a room that we purposely made it cool where we could stand the heat and yep. 90 degrees and whatever. But we're beaming out good news. Yep. So, you know, someone says, so what's the crux of the matter? They beam out good news. That's what we're doing. That's what we do. And we do a little Tony, Tony Shashri. We're not ashamed little, to little do spicy it. spicy seasoning. We're not ashamed. No. We, we know we get bad mouth. Okay, we take it. Okay. Take, we go with, roll with the punches. That's exactly right. Look, anytime you discuss. But we're not going to stop. I mean, it's, it, you know, they they they, right. they the cancel culture. Well, get them off TV. Get them off the podcast. That's fine. Whatever. We'll do it some other way. But we're not going to stop. No. Well, I think that's the one thing. Once you've showed that you don't really have any fear of being We're doing canceled, it because we love them. Yeah, we have no fear of cancellation. No. As your, as your new book states perfectly, everything we've ever done was canceled at the cross. So that's right. once that's been canceled, we're living we're living in gravy oh, now. Oh, look, it's a blast. That's exactly right. So, so we're going to do some uh, podcast uh, listener questions. We had not done that in a, in a little bit. So we're going to do a few of those. The first one was more of a, just a comment I was going to read to y'all because I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, Jen, I don't I don't guess that was our Jen, it's another Jen. But she said that because you were talking about B, BC and CE, you know, the common air and, the, yeah. you know, how, how that is. And the, you have a good way of discussing it. She said she said calls CE Christ entrance instead of the common air, which I thought That's that was pretty good. Pretty cool. That'll yeah. work. Yeah. Which is pretty. <laughs> it was just something. Good. And then she said, "I want to thank you and your family for being so public about your spirituality. I've been binge listening to the podcast, and she said she's on episode one thirty one. So Jen, you're gonna be a while before you hear us acknowledge you. So just but keep listening. We're up to three something now, three twelve, I think. Uh, she said, as a grown woman, wife, and mother, I haven't always led a life in Jesus' light, and now listening to y'all talk about it has really brought me into the light. I appreciate y'all more than words can describe. Yep. So, uh, you know, it's, like you said, that's that's what it's all about, and we get a lot of, you know, notes like this, and I appreciate y'all telling us about life change, because that's really what this whole thing is about. I mean, the Bible is about not only just redeeming us from sin, but it's also about transforming us, as we talked about last time from Romans 12, which is really good. Um, all right, here's here's another. Uh, this is a question. This is from Jeff. He's a longtime listener. And he said, what did Jesus mean when he said, let the dead bury their dead or bury their own dead? I can't figure it out. Can you answer it on, on a shame? What, what did he answer about the B.C. and the C? Was she wondering about that? No, she just said that she calls instead of calling it common error, she calls oh, it Christ. Interest. The atheists tend to call it the common error and they don't use A.D., which, you know, you know, amino, what was that? Uh, uh, anno domini. Anno domini, anno yeah. Anno domini, yeah. Year of our Lord. That's right. that's what the world's did for, till 1700s or what right. so. I don't know where come, I got amino, that's amino acid. <laughs> yeah. Somebody came along and said, well, we can't say B.C. before Christ and A.D., Anno Domini, year of our Lord, because we don't believe in any of that. Right. So they just want to bypass history. Yeah. The the historical Jesus showing up two thousand twenty one years, give it two or three years either way. You know, you know, Donna Eusebius Donna see us from some monk that that, that about five hundred or so. Mm -hmm. Constantine, when he was converted, said yeah. go back and check our archive. And find out the exact day. Yeah, when did it happen? And I, he come up with with what we now count time by. But but the bottom line is we're all counting time by Jesus. You can run, but <laughs> you can't you hide. Well, well, the Old Testament re referred to God the Father as the Ancient of Days. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he had yeah. many names. But Jesus said, or the Hebrew writer said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, so it really wouldn't matter. That's no. right. Because a lot of people, they're trying to use that as proof because it's like four years off, isn't it? Yeah, three, three or four it, years, yeah. either way. And I'm like, it, you got it's <laughs> impossible to come to God without faith, Hebrews That's 11, right. 6. So if we had proof, yeah, then it wouldn't be faith. Well, that's true. Let, let's, <laughs> well, right, but faith. it is remarkable that all modern day calendars pretty well start and stop. Well, and to your point, it, it's just a lucky coincidence that before the common era happens to be before Christ came. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> great coincidence. Well, <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a break. So one of the best things about our podcast that we enjoy is our Black Rifle coffee. Mm. It is very good. We, very good. We do Murdered Out, which is a kind of a double, double, what do you call it, double diamond black or something like that. I mean, it's a, it's a very strong blend, which kind of fits our... All you need. <laughs> That's right. And another thing we love about this company uh, is they're a veteran-owned company, and I've been making coffee in places all over the world for a very long time. They've also got a new... A can of the cold coffee that the young people seem to like. I, I don't really care for that, but what my kids do, they get it everywhere you go. And, and they sit, tell me Black Rifle makes a really good one. So you might want to check that out if you like that. So it's cold coffee. Cold coffee in a hmm. can. But um, I don't know. I guess it gets you on your, on your way when you're on the road. But here's what you do. You go to uh, blackriflecoffee.com slash fill. Use the code fill at checkout. You get 20% off your purchase. And also for your first coffee club, or we do the coffee club where it just comes to the house. So fuel your summer with America's coffee, blackriflecoffee.com slash fill. Use the code fill, 20% off, and enjoy. Yeah, so that, that's well, her point. Well, I think, the but it is a valid point that God wove these books or letters through history so that people who seek and want to dig, they're the ones going to find. The people that are open-minded who are cut to the heart by what Jesus did. But the ones who search, and that's why I use parables, that's why I use illustrations. And So you don't have to get everything all lined up. I mean, I, I see people like who are believers and they're just, how could the ark be big enough to hold all those animals? How could the ark be big enough to hold all those animals? It's like they have s some kind of uh, screw loose on trying to make everything in the Bible fit perfectly in time. We're three years off. We're three years off. How is it? How is this possible? Yeah. You're missing the forest for the trees. Right. Because in the end, you read John 20 and 21, blessed are those who haven't seen, but but have believed. And if Jesus, if everything he did would have been written down, there wouldn't be enough books in the world to hold it. I mean, he did way more. He is way more. But if you dig and look, you'll say, oh, yeah, that this he's a son As of God. a human being, he did enough to convince me. <clears throat> yeah. Huh? Well, <laughs> and, and he gave us enough to believe. I mean, look, when you watch how Jesus operated in his three years he was roaming around the earth, I mean, he was pretty cryptic. You know, in terms of, I mean, you had to really want to know about him or you didn't get him because most of well, them missed exactly. him. You know, exactly. and I so, simply have always said if, if, if that many human beings with their calendars and they date the time going back 2021 years, give or take a few. But if you just look at the historical Jesus, there's plenty of information outside the Bible uh, that proves he was here. So. Well, there's really not any dispute historically because so many other people wrote about him that yeah. they're not just in the Bible. College universities normally just skip over the, that time frame. Yeah. They just skip by that pretty quick. Josephus, who was— I a, talked to a college professor, history professor, Sammy, and he said headquarters told him to just don't just don't cover it. That, that, just, just forget <laughs> skip that. It. Just skip it. They don't have a, they don't have a historical— history teacher teaching Jesus showed up about when he showed up. They, they've researched it, you know, and they've got it down there pretty, a lot. He was here. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Plenty of information 
He's there. Well, I think everybody from other agrees historians. he was here. Right. It's just it's just who he who he is. Who he is. That's right. Was he yeah. was he the real deal? That's exactly mm-hmm. right. I tell you one thing, you're not gonna go find his body and do get some DNA. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll but make you, a bet on that. <laughs> it ain't there, boy. <laughs> but you know you would on any other religion because it was yeah. always some person, yeah. you know. Now that's what I hadn't figured out, people. I have more sympathy with people who just deny any existence than people who are following someone who's dead. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what? <laughs> You're not going to follow them long. <laughs> You're going to follow them right into the ground. Well, that's why you get into all this mystic stuff about, you know, we're, we become one with the universe and floating particles through the whatever, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I've been pretty disappointed in the lack of ideas outside of Jesus when it comes to the resurrection. It's a lot of copying been, going on. I mean, the you'd think the internet, we were talking about they get it wrong. You, it seemed like they'd have some something, that some idea beside, oh, we're just going to become energy and mm-hmm. be that for millions of years yeah. in some form that we won't recognize nor be able to acknowledge. Okay. <laughs> give me give me something with some that's been fermented if that's my belief cuz I that's well, depressing. And mo- it is depressing. Most of the most of the more famous atheists over the last 500 years were pretty depressing people. Their writings and stuff. Yeah. I mean, most of them committed suicide, which why wouldn't you? I mean, if you just didn't have any purpose or meaning of being here, it'd be a pretty tough environment. Especially if yeah. things weren't going your way. The so. Apostle Paul said it better, 1 Corinthians 15, 12. But if it's preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. He ends it up by saying if there was no resurrection, we're to be pitied more than all men. Right. He's, he's got a great point. Right. Jesus wasn't resurrected. We're, we're done. Yeah. Well, what's the point? <laughs> and he even he even said, "Look, I mean, if I just, people without faith live, what is the point of it all? Right. And they and that's why the suicide rate so high. Mm-hmm. They just said there's nothing to anything, right? And I'm, he made, he made the I'm point. just a glob of molecules floating around on planet Earth, and I've lost my way, and I'm just depressed with the whole thing, and bored, and scared." Right. So I think I'll just do myself in and yeah. get it over with. It happens all the time, unfortunately. Yep. I, I think, too, there's a there's a verse in here that I don't think anybody knows what it means. But back then, I think it was so much more believable that there is a God and Jesus came back from the de- dead because I guess maybe they were closer to that. You know, when he got in 29, he said, if there's no resurrection, what will those who do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? I've been asked many times, you know, what that means. But I think they just thought, man, they missed it. Yeah. Which leads us, there's another question that says that we were going to cover, or have we already? Well, uh, I, I read it, but we hadn't got there. Yeah, when he said, why, why did Jesus say in... Is so it this Luke nine. Well, it's, there's two places, and I, and I put them both in those. Matthew eight, because the Luke version is a little different than the Matthew. And I thought we'd read them both. So the Matthew eight eighteen says, when Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, "Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go." Jesus replied, "Foxes have holes." And birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Which was a nice way to say I'm homeless. Yeah. And I, you sure you want some of that? Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Because he's the author of life and everybody is dead in their sins. Right. Unless they come to him. He was just speaking of the world. Everybody sins, everybody dies. Right. They're already dead. They've sinned. I think it, I guess it bothers people because it sounds harsh. Um, you know, that he's well, because they're like, well, man, he's, he was trying to go comfort his family. But I'm, he, I'm look, the only one that can forgive sin. And you've asked me what you should do. You should follow me because I'll remove your sin. The ones who don't follow me, let the dead bear their own dead. But speaking of missing the forest for the trees, 
Jesus could have known that he was just going there because he had reward money coming, inheritance or what, you know. What I mean? yeah. He's like, yeah. I mean, it could have been that. I mean, the rich young ruler of the same way, he was like, hey, I've done all these things. He said, go sell everything you have. Well, that sounds a little harsh. Yep. So so let me read. The, they're a little bit different in the Luke 9, 57 through 62. He says, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. So it's Luke words a little differently. And then another says, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Well, that seems a little harsh. Right. But what about when he said, uh, where's that Matthew 12, where he said they, they came and told Jesus he was in a circle and they were praying and they said hey your mom and brothers are out there and he said yep. how did he say that this is my mother and father and my brothers yeah yeah he looked at his disciples and said here's the ones here's my here's which my i bad think man. it's the same principle in that it is in, in jesus you're part of a forever family and so these these people in, the, in your daily life if it's focused on jesus and trying to help others be a part of this, it, it's a it's a better existence. The it, the people who are already dead, or you're saying goodbye to my family. Well, he, if, he's if, the if, only if hope come, there is. He's if, the only hope there is. He said, "You better listen to what I have to say about what I'm fixing to do." If they're part of the forever family, guess what? There is no goodbyes. That's it. Let's take another break. So, Jason, you were up in Colorado. To- a lot of people commenting on your hair and your beard. Did you kind of st- stood out a little bit? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were in a rock band, right? Well, yeah. uh, a lot of people don't have as much hair as you do, and uh, they start losing it earlier because of male pattern baldness, which, you know, it happens to people. Uh, one of our sponsors, Keeps, which has been with us from the very beginning of our podcast, uh, they offer a way to help you keep your hair. So they say once it's gone, they can't do anything about it. So if it starts coming out, you need to check these guys out. Uh, you go to their website. Uh, they have a doctor there recommended that will recommend FDA treatments for you. Um, so it's all good. Check them out if you need them. Go to keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. You get 50% off your first order for your hair loss treatments, which is great. Keeps dot com slash door and hang on to your hair. So my my take on it is, is that the context of what he's dealing with, and you saw it in the Matthew text. So you got all these people that are following Jesus around. And then every once in a while, a pretty big chunk of them would say, we believe in you. Remember John 8? Yep. Those people said, oh, we believe you're the one. And then he started talking some more. Well, it turns out they didn't believe at all. Nope. Because that was well, the ones they he believed ch- in their fitting Jesus into their narrative. Exactly. So, my, so is, what I think it's is belief is with a master. Jesus, this is pretty harsh. But what he what he's showing is is the minute you can make any excuse that he doesn't, he's not your Lord. Then you started down the road. Now, what any excuse that keeps you from following Jesus. Is not good. He said, if you love me, you would do what I said. Right. I said, he, they said, you claim to be Abraham's children. He said, no, you're not. He said, Abraham loved me, but you don't. Right. You're not paying attention. He said, you belong to your father. He's, well, the, he's the father he, of lies. But he speaking, also, speaking, said, speaking of harsh. <laughs> but he also said in that same chapter, he said, you don't come to me because you don't have any room for me. He said that two or three times. And you say, well, what's he talking about? He just didn't fit the narrative. Yeah. That, and that, I think that's really what it is. Yeah. People look at Jesus and they try to fit him in to their life. Because he said that two or three occasions, which I always wondering what that meant at, when I was first a Christian. I was like, no mean room. Because <laughs> you're looking at it wrong. You, you, you've got to just say, hey, will you accept me? Where are we going? That's because it. if you really believe in the resurrection, which leads to Jesus, then you'll see these people again. Well, think about though: how many people want Jesus a la carte? I, I don't want the whole meal. I, I just I need a little side of Jesus, you know, for when I'm down or when I'm 
you know, feeling spiritual. I'm having trouble with his demands about behavior. Yeah. I just need a little bit. So this is the point. You're either all in or you're not. Yep. I mean, and I think that's his point to any of them. And remember, Jesus had several. You mentioned a rich young ruler. He had several people where he he was a pretty good judge of, you know, their thought processes. Uh, about as good as it comes. And remember Simon, you know, when he was sitting over there mean thinking mean thoughts about that woman. So Jesus knew. He was like, you're just making excuses. Very seldom, if ever. I'm saying ever do you run upon somebody who is the mistake free being that will conquer death for you. Yeah. Make you alive. Cause you know, death right there staring you in the face. So is sin. He said, I'm, I'm, I, I can get rid of both of them. Yeah. I'm going to do that, but you don't believe in me. Right. You're trying to kill me. They thought by killing him, we'll, we'll finish this up. We'll show them what we're going to do. Right. Well, his death saved them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's why they all were cut to the heart in Acts 2 when Jesus said, I mean, when uh, Peter said, he pointed to Jesus, he said, he's the, he's the one you've been waiting on. I'm the one you've been waiting on right here. That's what Peter was saying. Right. You know, when they heard it, they were cut to the heart. A lot of them said, yep. what in the world do we do? You mean our killing him, that murdering him, saved us from our sin. He said, he's the ultimate sacrifice. Y'all been sacrificing all these animals. Your Messiah is here. Right. And then, and, and there were some who believed. So that's the starting point. Well, and we've talked a lot. I mean, through the years, we've all helped lead people to Christ that, I mean, their families weren't excited about their decision for a lot of different reasons. I mean, and we've, we told them through the years, look, you got to do this for you. You know, you can't just do it for somebody else. And I think those are the hard things you get into with something like this. I mean, it happens. I think a good verse to read for that question when he said, let the dead bury their own dead is when we were in Romans eight in verse nine, where he said, you're not controlled by the sinful nature, but by the spirit. If the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, even if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies through a spirit who lives in you. That's it. I think he was given that point. In that moment, of course, he probably thought, he probably thought what we would think. Well, <laughs> good grief. You don't even want me to go to the funeral? Because when you really think about it, if you're concerned about your family member at the funeral, I hate to tell you this, it's too late. Too late. That's over. Yeah. I mean, I go. But I realize, I reflect, and we deal with the people that are alive. But whatever you have to do there, that 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 ship has truly sailed. Right. And remember, they asked him. They said, "Well, we want to follow you." He said, "Well, okay. Well, let's now, go. look, I don't have anything, you know. But you sure you want in on some of this action? Oh, I'm ready. But for first, let me go do something else. I mean, thing, but you're telling the Son of God that. Well, yeah, I, I, got, I got pressing matters, yeah. you know, and I'll indir- get back to you. Indirectly, Jesus was like, I'll take care. Of, I can take care of that funeral. <laughs> that right. guy, I mean, but, you know, they're not right. thinking he's a supernatural. I being. always thought, right. even if you think you have a good excuse, if it's an excuse for not going all in on Jesus, it's not good. Never good. Yeah. But and, not, and, and the minute you make one, then you make somewhere down the road. You start back. You up. also know now where they got the idea, just like most shows, of the walking dead. That's right. This is where it came from. That's where it came from. Zombies. Everybody's always been intrigued by the zombies. Isn't that funny? It always comes back to something. You're like, oh, that's where they got. (laughs) Right out of the Bible. And when one of them got a head shot on one of them, they they all went out there and buried him. (laughs) (laughs) The zombie. Yeah, you had to shoot him in the head, whatever that meant. All right, let's take another break. So, um, one of our sponsors is a company called Bowl and Branch. And I don't know why we have so many sleep related sponsors on this podcast. I guess because they know how much Jace likes to sleep. Or actually, it's Missy that really likes yeah, to sleep. Yeah, she's, I don't sleep much. Yeah, she's in, you're, you're like a few hours. Yeah. 
four to five hours. Four to but five when hours. I do, I sleep good. Yeah. Or you want a good mattress and a good set of sheets. So Bowling Branch makes really, really good sheets. Um, we've been, at least I've been using them for years, uh, even before they were a sponsor on the podcast. It's it's a I, they said they called it a luxury quality for a fair price, and I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, thir- you get a thirty night worry free guarantee, so you get to check them out. If you don't like them, you can send them back, but I can promise that you won't. Uh, it's a great experience to check out Bowl and Branch sheets. So here's what you do: you go to bowlandbranch.com. That's b o l l a n d b r a n c h bowlandbranch.com. You get fifteen percent off your first set of sheets if you use the promo code Robertson. So that's bowlandbranch.com. Promo code Robertson, fifteen percent off. All right, so here's one from Robert. He says, when it says, let us make man in our image, which is Genesis 1, 26, who is us and our? Who is God referring to? Obviously, it seems like more than one. So that was his question. Well, a good place to go was Jesus himself when he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He just conquered death. He is God. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations and you baptize in the name of the Father, that's the one who sent Jesus, and of the Son, that's the one that's doing the talking right now, who just beat the grave and is back, been raised to life. So I see Father who sent him, Son who died for us and was buried and raised from the dead, and of the Holy Spirit. I see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It, uh, whoever asked that question, what's his name? Robert. Robert, you're never going to understand fully one being who had three entities incorporated as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I've never heard of that, (laughs) and I've never read that anywhere else but in the Bible. Right. And to get your mind wrapped around it, it's a booger. But the bottom line is... It's plain that God is Father, Son, and Holy well, Spirit. Well, and my take always is that's the, Matthew, by the way, Matthew twenty-eight, Robert, and then read uh, Luke one thirty-five when the when when the Mary was told how this was going to work, the power of the Spirit, the Father sent the Son. You got John fourteen sixteen seventeen. You got Romans fourteen seventeen and eighteen. So. There's a lot of verses that mention Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. To get a good grasp of that in a human being's head, it's a tough one to. It's it, they they've debated over that one and come up with all kinds of stuff. But well, our, a lot of people, our God is three essences somehow, and yet He's one, which is different because some people have have it as three different gods. That's not the way He describes Himself nope. in any of the errors. So it's kind of, but you know, when you think about it, he said he made, let us make man in our image. And then that's exactly what happened. Because when you make a human being, we have three components to our essence of who we are. That's we have correct. a body, we have a spirit, an animating force that makes us, and spirits are different. And then we have a soul, which is a, a spiritual part of us that yearns to be like somebody well, I, I think it's the one who, who made us. So yep. if you think about it, it really makes perfect sense that a a three-pronged entity, is the only way I know how to describe it, would make us a three-part person. That's Cause, correct. Because if you, if you die, you know, all of a sudden the body's there, no spirit, no soul. Yep. It's just a body, yep. you know, and you, it's not going to move. It's not going to be. If there's no soul and spirit, we're not getting out of here. That's exactly right. <laughs> Do you remember in John 1, it said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, which would make sense that when God the Father said, let us make man in our image, well, you read from another place in John 1 that says, well, he was yeah. with God in the beginning. Right. It helps you wrap your mind around. Yeah, and by the good. way, John... Genesis 1 says the earth was formless and empty and the Holy Spirit hovered Hovered. over the waters. He just said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1 1 says Jesus was there with him and the power, the spirit was hovering. But who was hovering over the waters? Right. God. God, God God was. 
This that was my attempt to say, but who was on first? <laughs> what was on second? <laughs> well, what what was the guy that came in, John? Yeah, yeah, that was God too. But he just of course you and you was just, the word. Another good way to think about it, you've described it this way for is is you you see the three entities in eras. So everything the Old Testament, everything from creation to when Jesus got here, was featured more of the Yahweh, the Father. The yep. ancient of days. But he said, I'm coming in human form. But, and you still saw the Holy Spirit because there would be different times where the Spirit would would indwell somebody. So he was well, working in yeah, the Old Testament. But it was mainly, the Holy Spirit mainly worked on right, people. Correct. Not in them. That's exactly Way back right. You didn't have a mass indwelling until we get to the post. Well, because then he poured it out so everybody could get correct. it. But there were a few instances. Yeah. But you know, we also had a... We had a donkey that got indwelled. It did, but I think it was more. It, it came on him in his in his right. presence. Right, that's true. That's so. When he speaks of God being with them in the Old Testament, this is way before God became flesh. Jesus, there was a rock that followed the the all the Jewish people when God was doing all these wonderful things, dreadful things. Uh, the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. So he was there the whole time from well, the beginning. Well, he was the Word. Yeah, but look, Phil, the, what's confusing that I think the Holy Spirit through the writers made clear, when it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God, he was with God in the beginning. Now, you just read that he was actually, because that's 1 Corinthians 10, he yep. was accompanying this march with Moses, and you're like, well, wait a minute, Jesus was there in that? In that moment, well, he was the word. It's calling him the word, which I think it's not a stretch to say it was God's communication. I mean, I think when God used words, because let's face it, he's only using words for our benefit. He's he's beyond word. It's like he's the dictionary, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. And I think that's why you also have the Tower of Babel and all the languages and I mean, God just did this so we weren't bumping into each other, literally like the Walking Dead, because yep. they're going, uh, uh, uh. But he, he gave us life, and he gave us language, and so now he's using Jesus as an illustration for us to wrap our head around. Well, he was the Word. So you're like, okay, I get that. He mm -hmm. was the, the communication. He was there all along. But then he becomes flesh in verse 14, but verse 3 of John 1 is an interesting thing because it says, because this doesn't seem to fit, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. So even though he was deemed the word for our benefit, he was in on the making of everything mm -hmm. also, cause, which shows you he is God. Yep. Well, it was a word that created, and he said he is a word. So. That's what I'm saying. And then Romans 9, 5, I think, is the exclamation point because it says you can trace his human history, his genealogy of, of Jesus, who is God over all, forever praised. So, Wrap your head around that. <laughs> so let's, take, yeah. let's take another break. So, and remember, Jason, John 14, Jesus told the disciples, because they didn't want him to go, he said, I got to go. I'm going to go prepare a place for you. He said, unless I go, I can't send you the Spirit. So again, he put that in the context of the Godhead had planned this out the whole time, exactly what was going to happen. Oh, yeah. And so he was like, I got to go back. Now God I'm lives. I'm going to be mediating for you, but he, the Spirit's going to live in you. Yeah, God lives in us through his Spirit. His Spirit. And I'm that, sure there's over like... Over. 17 people out there saying, yeah, but what about Ephesians where it says there's one God and Father of all who is over all, through all, and in all? Yep. Yep. He's one. <laughs> and yet there's three <laughs> parts. I thought of there was three. Nope. He's one. He's one. Is he three? Yep. But he's one. Yep. Which is like saying, Jace Robertson, he's, he's one. You're one person. But there's three components to who you are. Do you well, have a heard, problem? You've if, heard the theologians expound on length these issues, but now you've heard it from the C plus mind. <laughs> well, Phil, do you have a problem if I eat an egg and I say, 
I, I, I split it up because some of these yuppies, you know, they won't eat the yolk. Yeah, it's too fat, too much fat in there. And, uh, and, and some of the rednecks won't eat the shell. <laughs> but is it all an egg? Is it multiple eggs? Just one. It's one, it's one. But we have three distinct, but it's one egg. But the difference between God and an egg is you can't separate yeah. God. Right. It can, he can be shown because he's God. One over. of the reasons I follow Jesus Christ and his father by the power of the spirit is, is that egg. I look at that egg. I said, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And what came first? I've said this before. We actually know the answer to that riddle, the chicken or the egg. What was it? Well, you read Genesis. He made the animals, That's the right. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have an egg unless you had a chicken lay the egg, right? He made the chicken. He said he made all the animals. That's then right. all of a sudden, an egg popped out. And what got me was that somebody looked at that. That egg came out of that chicken's butt. And somebody looked at it and said, hmm. I wonder, if, I wonder if that'd be any good to eat. They didn't look at it until Genesis 9. <laughs> Something happened in Genesis 9 when he said, hey, you can eat all this Think stuff. Think of a world without Jesus, and then while you're at it, whoever <laughs> asked the question, what's your name, Robert? <laughs> yeah, Robert. Robert, and then all you have to do, my man, is go in the fridge and set an egg in front of you. You say, do you realize what? how much good comes out of that? Start with pies, cake, breakfast. Up. I mean, an egg is a is a major influence on human beings <laughs> life that's right because i mean it's just a lot of stuff you can do there has it. to be a god if you look at an egg right i told you this but so is milk <laughs> cow's milk that's delicious. but whoever said look down there before the milking of the cow took hold and said yeah i'm gonna try that <laughs> and all the advantages of that milk gives you oh, yeah. all the whatever i'm gonna grab, I mean, you I'm gonna grab said, that udder and what comes out of it we're gonna drink well that. if you look down and saw a human being under cow under a cow <laughs> in the first few days and you're like you talking about a weirdo lock that guy up <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a sick individual what are you in doing <laughs> i'm gonna get me something to drink here and that's where you're looking <laughs> I mean, you talking about a sick, what kind of sick world are we in? <laughs> so, and look, the thing about eggs, and you, you just keep coming up with new things. The other day, I come in there and stone, because, you know, stone's always thinking. Most things that come out of things. Uh, rear end. Heinous, the rear end. <laughs> you can't use them. But in the case of an egg, it's, yep. So, look, I come in there, saying. I get home from a trip. I said, Stone, what you what you cooking us tonight? You know, because Stone's a kind of our camp cook. He said, I try, I got something new I'm trying. I said, Oh, I like trying the new stuff. So he took he took hamburger, made him a grilled hamburger, but he made a depression in the top of it, and he puts all these on his smoker, and then he put an egg. He just he just put an egg inside there, and then he wrapped a piece of bacon around it, and he put it on the smoker. It sounds delicious. Oh, it was incredible. I mean, that egg cooks in the top of that burger, and you got your bacon on and there, And you too. can cook it over easy or whatever. Yeah, right. You can get it as, as if you like it really runny or if you yeah. like it a little more oh, cooked yeah. through. And so that's what he did. That's what he came up with. It was brilliant. I mean, it was it was a well, hamburger you, with well, an egg. Well, you, you erroneously called him a, a cook, but I would think he's he's maybe in line being a chef. Well, he's he's, he's getting, getting there. there. He's, his credibility. You know, the good. other night I had a soft shell crab, which mm. is unusual. So good. It. I don't. I haven't researched soft shell crabs, but I, crabs. But I know at some point in their existence, everything gets soft, and at that moment you can eat the whole thing. Yeah. And I did. I mean, guts and all. Yeah. Well, was it good? It was phenomenal. Delicious. So I'm like, it's a little soft fry on it. Just they kind of fry it on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. fried it. Oh, I, if you just looked at foodstuffs and step back a minute and just say, you know what? But who figured I, that I, out? There's one or two sources: <laughs> right. salt water or God. I just think I lean toward God. Yeah, a creative. And process. you do the same thing with a sardine. You put him in a little oil and just eat the whole thing. Yeah, guts and all, and it's good. 
Yeah, Dad was eating some for now lunch you, yesterday. You do smell like that. I keep a cabinet full of sardines. A few hours because it lingers. Yeah, it's got a little bit of an after. The belching will take place for <laughs> at least six hours. No, that's just that's just some of your stomach problems. <laughs> that doesn't bother me, sardines. Not at all. Because remember, Jason, you can't smell. So you know, I've been in a many a duck blind after you ate a can of sardines and you'll be down there and go, wow. You know, you're wow. And I'm like, sardines. Because I do the same thing. Uh, that's amazing that we were talking about the deity, about the, the, the Godhead and all that. And we've now. Well, we, the point we, is, we've fallen Alan, into a hole because you're going back to creation. And when he asked that, and I was just making the point that they were all present. There is no other rational explanation in the creation process. I think it's a. I think for somebody noticing that, that's good. That is good. Yeah, because he's saying, "Let us make man in our image." Well, there was nobody else there, right? But people want their conspiracy theorists, you know. I mean, it's like, you know what they say? You've heard that joke, three conspiracy theorists walk into a bar. What do they say? It can't be a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, that. I hadn't heard that. That's pretty good. <laughs> but that, I mean, they're like, well, who else was there? Because he said, let us make man. Oh, he's got, there's some other yeah. God out there. Well, that I mean, I think that's where the question yeah. Is coming from, but it's like no, he he's he's a complex being. He's not complex to himself, but he is to us because it's hard for us to wrap. I think if you if him. you just take a little time and read the book of John, then you're going to be pretty clear because Jesus is very clear on basically what the layout is in terms of yep. his relationship with the Father as well as the Spirit. That they're all functioning in different ways, but they're one. And so I mean, well, I remember Jesus' own words are pretty. Clear. I remember vividly before I had the spirit of God in me. And just to put it bluntly, there's a vast difference walking around on planet earth yeah. without the spirit of God. And when you receive the spirit of God Great and point. you can't receive the spirit of God, unless you hear about the father who sent the son. That's exactly right. Yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's the word. But final, I, a final lot word. Of people ask me that because they're like, well, how come y'all focus so much on Jesus? Well, you focus on Jesus because he's the image. He's the relatable communication part of God right. uh, of understanding. Yes, you get the spirit. You're led by the spirit. It's awesome. You experience the fruit of the spirit. It's, but And you're looking at God as your father. And, and if your baptism is tied to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, according to Jesus, here's the son talking. He said, I'm going to go make disciples, and here's what I want you to do. You baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And people say, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said, just just do it. <laughs> just do it, man. <laughs> well, and, you know, when we went to, Jason and I went to school, I, I understood Jesus because he changed my life. I understood the Holy Spirit because I was watching the transformation. But when I studied the Old Testament for me personally, it really clicked in for me that the whole history of humankind was getting us ready for the moment. So that's, that's right. why I like the Old Testament study too. So thank you, Robert, uh, for the question. And you guys, uh, Jeff, and thank you, Jen, and others that send them in. We got a, one more, but we're going to do it next time we get back into Romans So uh, from Jared. So we'll do his when we get to Romans 12. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.